welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm Underhook and this is my re-review of the Tier 8 Russian Scout tank, the LTT-B. So is it any good? Yes it is. Now I say re-review because I reviewed this tank when it used to be a Tier 7 light tank. That was back in September of 2015 I did that review and I said it was a good tank back then. But it's had a couple of changes uh, when they moved it to Tier 8, so we'll cover what they are. At the moment, you're going to be watching a battle on the map called Mountain Pass. It's a Tier 10 game, and we're in our Tier obviously, 8 Scout Tank. I'm going to rush to the edge of the bowl, just to spot across the bowl. I have uh, binoculars and a camouflage net fitted. Uh, this I use this as a passive scout because the view range isn't that good. It's 380 meters, which isn't as good as some of the other Scout Tanks, so I don't... Uh, I, need, I need better than coated optics, I need binoculars, and you'll see in a minute, I'm just going to pull in here to spot, and you'll note that I don't really spot anything until my binoculars kick in, so we've stopped, oh somebody else has spotted that tank I think, and my binoculars are kicking now, oh it's more noticeable in a minute, so I'm holding off shooting this guy, but it looks like no one else is shooting him, so I'm not going to get any assistance damage, so I decided I might as well get some of my own damage, and I fire a shot into it. As it turns out, somebody else does hit him when we get 311 spotting, so there you go. Now, waiting for binoculars. My binoculars kicked in, not spotting, or I decide to move up a bit more, and now we'll wait. Binoculars kicking in now. So you can see there, as, as soon as they kicked in, we spotted them. Without the binoculars, we couldn't spot them. So... That sort of shows you the spotting range on this tank, and uh, that's why I fit binoculars rather than coated optics. If you were in, say, the M41 Walker Bulldog that has 400 meter spotting range, then you could probably just have coated optics and still be able to spot at this sort of range. Whereas this tank, I think, kind of needs the binocs because it only has a 380 standard range. Now, that's one of the changes. When it was a tier seven tank, uh, they changed to tier 8, they actually nerfed the view range. Now here's a sneaky man trying to get through after the initial barrage, but we get one into him. Now you can see there we're penetrating the sides of these tanks pretty well. It has 170 millimeters of penetration and does, uh, how much damage does it do per shot? 180 average damage per shot, which is not bad. And if you use premium ammo, it does 216 penetration for 180 damage. Now that hasn't changed since it was a tier 7. The only things that changed from when it was a tier 7 is they reduced the view range. It used to be 390, now it's 380. And they, the other thing they did was they improved the gun depression. It used to only have 3 degrees of gun depression, now it has 5 degrees. It was awful with the 3 degrees because I, I think I said in my review a couple of years ago that I had a situation, for example, where a it was an E50, was 20 meters in front of me, we were both on level ground, and I couldn't aim at his lower plate because I couldn't get my gun down low enough. So it was a real restriction. So that, that's a definite improvement to the tank. But I think that's the only buff. Oh no, two buffs. They improved the gun depression by two degrees and they gave it 100 more hit points when they moved it up a tier. That said though, back then, uh, 2015, you would see tier 10s anyways a tier 7. So tier 7 scout tanks used to see, instead of two tiers above, you used to see three tiers above in a scout tank. They were treated differently to other tanks, whereas now they're treated the same as every other tank. So, yeah, so it hasn't really made that much difference to the tank. The, the real nerf, really, to this tank has been that it has good armour. It has um, 90 mils of... The upper plate on this tank is 90, I think the lower plate's 70. And the whole front of the turret is also 90 mils. So, it used to be able to really bully, especially lower tier or the same tier scout tanks. So tier 7 or tier 6 scout tanks, you could just basically drive straight at them frontally. They couldn't pen you. You would then ram them because it was quite heavy, uh, 23 ton, quite heavy for a scout tank of its tier. You'd ram them, do massive damage, and then just push them into a wall and keep the front of your tank against them and blow them away and they couldn't penetrate you. So it was a really great anti-scout tank. It kind of can't do that anymore uh, because simply its um, its armor isn't that good now because it doesn't, you know, it can't, when it's top tier, it's sort of okay-ish now, but it used to be sort of overpowered, its armor. But you can still bounce uh, scout tanks of equal tier, like you can still bounce a Walker Bulldog uh, from time to time, stuff like that. 
and you can still bounce surprisingly some even pretty big tanks but it's um, not that easy so I don't want to get in front of that WZ gun so I just sort of spot and pull back now I can see my Type 61 moving up here sort of side I might just uh, pop up again so that the gun's pointing at me and it gives him a shot just pop up the spot I haven't managed to spot him yet and now oh great yeah he, he shoot he spots me before I can spot him that's fair Took our gun out. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. Um, but it is a good tank. It, it's very fast. It's a 68 kilometers an hour in forward, which is the same as uh, the other fastest tanks of its tier. I'm not counting premium tanks here. But the Walker Bulldog and I think it's the Bat Chat both also do 68 as their top speed. The terrain resistances aren't as good on this tank as they are on the Walker Bulldog. So Walker Bulldog is all around better maneuverability than this, but this one is still pretty good. And 68, it, it is, it's not like slow up hills or anything. It's it's fast all around, so you can maneuver. I just go for tracking sure that 232 because I really can't penetrate him at the moment. The other nerf, I guess, to all light tanks was that the penetration, uh, the loss of penetration over distance has been increased. Oh, it, de it decreases more quickly, so that's a nerf, but that was to all light tanks. That was just a quick little spotting game. It was only a class three, and you can see we did get Confederate medal. We finished about middle of the of the board there. 11 shots, 10 hits, 7 penetrated. So not bad. If As long as you get side shots, it's all right. 1,277 damage and a 933. That was from long range. We spotted 6 vehicles and damaged 8 of them. And we did 1,010 spotting damage as well. Does earn pretty good income, this tank. Although it had a 10,000 holiday up bonus. We take that off. We probably made about 20 grand. But that's okay, considering it was an average game in Tier 8. So this game we're on Ensk and it's a tier 9 game this time and it's just all tier 9s and tier 8s in this game. So 950 hit points, 23 tonnes, 68 is the top speed. It has a track and turret traverse of around about 50 so that's very very good so it is a very agile tank. As we said, the gun depression has been improved to 5 degrees. The view range is 380. The aim time is about 2.1 seconds, which is kind of in the middle ground there. The uh, Chinese WZ-132 and the Hawk-12 both have uh, much higher damage per shot in their guns. I think they have better penetration as well. But, uh, and their aim time is a little bit slower. But the other tanks like the Walker Bulldog and the Bat Chat have a much um, quicker aim time than this. So the aim time is kind of in between. Uh, really, I don't see the reason why it doesn't have as good an aim time as the other tanks. So the aim time is a little slow, but it's okay. Accuracy dispersion is 0.36, which is, or 0.35 it might be, which is kind of, you know, so-so. Uh, I decided to take a shot there because nothing had been spotted in the Bat Chat, which has already moved up, hadn't spotted anything. So it looks like... The enemy team has made a big mistake and left this field pretty much vacant and that's why I risked the shot because I could see that the field was vacant otherwise I probably would have held off firing there unless I wanted to instantly explode. Uh, how will we actually get that shot in? That was, uh, I took a chance firing that shot as far as whether we're hit or not and we got a bit lucky. Oh, can we get artillery? There's the other arty there. I missed that shot. I'm wobbling all over the joint. I think that actually hit. That looked like the uh, it hit that tank, but just bounced or something. That shot went wild. Accuracy isn't good at long range. Seems to be something they've done to scout tanks as well to nerf their long range accuracy. I see the Ferdinand there, and I thought the Bat Chat was on my side of the building. And then I realised, oh, hang on, he's on the other side with the Ferdinand. I better go and I better go and help. Sorry about my puppy barking in the background there. So I go for a tracking shot which I don't succeed, but aside now, because he hits the building, I decide to get him behind him just to slow him down from turning so he can't get the bat chat. We have a team, bit of teamwork there, wedging him in, and we finish off that third. And I get hit by artillery though. Bit of payback from artillery. This Jag Tiger is sitting with his side to me, so I figure, hey, it's gonna take artillery a little bit of time to load, so let's just get these shots in. I've got a stunned crew, so the reload's a bit slow, but we're getting the shots in anyway. And my dog's going crazy. I don't know why it doesn't normally bark at all. Anyway. So the rate of fire is 11.76 rounds per minute. 
which is also kind of average. It does have a lot of things which I guess are kind of average compared to the other scout tanks, but the one thing it has that's not average is really its armor. It does increase the survivability, even though the hit points are kind of uh, average on this tank, the survivability is pretty good simply because you do bounce the odd shot that you probably wouldn't bounce in other scout tanks, so it's probably the most forgiving of the scout tanks. Also the camouflage is not bad, I think the Walker Bulldog has the worst camouflage rating because it's higher which probably explains why it has a better view range although I think the Hawk actually has 410 meters view range and that's the best one in the class so maybe but I, I don't think the Hawk's taller than the, than the uh, Walker Bulldog I'm not sure so we get another shot in there so really these guys are just driving around trying to spot us and pick us off but the reverse is happening and we're picking them off our team is doing pretty well so I'm debating whether to move forward here and just go for some spotting to help out my team a little bit. We can see there that, that pattern. Oh, ooh, I was lucky there. Just kind of waiting for me. Damn, though, artillery got me again. I want to get this arty, but I just can't see him. Oh, it's all right. Our arty finishes him off. That's good. And I get hit by the other arty again. Well, I guess you could say at least the artillery is going for scout things, which is probably what they should do, although I think it's probably... A bit of self-preservation on their part. They're worried about us driving up and killing them any second. And it's probably about time we do that and actually go after Arty now. So yeah, to sum up all around, I think it's a pretty good scout tank. I've enjoyed driving it, and I am driving it because I want to unlock the, uh, the T-54. Now it takes about 225,000 to unlock the T-54 with the LTTB. But if you unlock the T-54 with the T-44, the tier 8 medium tank, it only takes, uh, I think it's about 160,000 XP. So it's an extra like 80,000 XP to unlock it with the LTTB, which is very, very odd. Anyway, there you go. We get the final kill, and that's the end of the game of Rooney. Hope you enjoyed it. That turned out to be a class one in the tank. And there you go. We finished on top for our team with 1,059 XP and 2,118 damage, which was pushing the top three for damage on our team. Not bad for a little light tank. We fired 19 shots, 13 of them hit, and all 13 that hit actually penetrated, which is unusual. So we were a bit lucky with our shots there. Total damage, 2,118. Uh, 927 was long range, over 300 meters. We uh, spotted one damage, seven destroying two, and did a thousand and seven spotting damage as well. If we take off the 14,000 credits for the holiday ops, then we made about 26,000 profit, which is kind of okay, I guess. Not huge amounts. I hope you enjoyed this re-review of the LTTB. It is a good tank. I think if you're new to scouting, it's probably the best one of this tier to try, simply because you probably survive longer in the LTTB just because you'll bounce the odd shot. That uh, So from that respect, it's probably good. But I think so far, in my experience, the M41 Bulldog is the all-round sort of most manoeuvrable, quickest, best gun depression, best gun handling, best spotting sort of tank out there. Anyway, it is pretty good though. Hope you enjoyed the re-review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ and have fun.